This video is dedicated to all the pregnant women out there who have been told that they are crazy or that they're just feeling gas bubbles when they know for a fact they just felt their baby move. If this happens to be your first pregnancy, you likely won't recognize the movements until about week 16 to 25. For example, in my first pregnancy, I didn't feel baby move until week 18. But is it possible to feel movement before then? Welcome to the DeConta channel, where we discuss all things educational and we never duck away from difficult topics, including whether you can feel your baby move before week 16. So what's the rationale for when a pregnant woman can feel her baby move anyways? Some obvious factors that contribute to whether a mother can feel her baby move are the size of the fetus, the relative activity of the fetus, and the strength of the fetus. The size, strength, and relative activity are all obvious factors that are different from person to person that contribute to whether or not a mom will feel her baby move early on or later. But these aren't all of the puzzle pieces required for a mother to be able to feel her baby move. There are two main additional things that contribute to a mother feeling this quickening, which is the first flutter movements that you're likely so eager to feel. The first factor is where the placenta is even located within the uterus. And the second factor is the mother's unique nervous system. For the first point, the placenta can grow and attach to the uterus in a variety of different places. It could be front, the back, the top, and even the bottom, even though if it does end up on the bottom, however, that's something called placenta previa, and that can cause birth complications later because it's blocking the birth canal. But literally any other position that the placenta is in is okay and totally safe for the baby. But there is one unique position that makes it even better for the mother to be able to feel the baby move. This best position or optimal position, if you will, is called posterior placenta, meaning that the placenta has implanted and grown behind your baby. In other words, closer to your spine. This placental position is optimal for you feeling baby move in there because literally the only layers between you and baby are your skin, your fat, your muscle, and uterus. Then there's baby. However, if you happen to have your placenta in the front, so closer to your belly button, this is called anterior placenta. And this literally acts like a cushion or a pillow between you and your baby. So instead of just skin, fat, muscle, uterus, baby, you now have a pillow within those layers blocking out and cushioning all the movements you could be feeling. Now for that second point. The nervous system of the mother also plays a huge role in whether or not she's going to feel her baby move earlier or later. Since the reason we feel any sensation at all, pain, touch, pressure, heat, is all thanks to the nervous system, and we know that the uterus is connected within that nervous system, then we have to say, okay, every person's nervous system is going to be unique to them, although very similar amongst human beings, but still unique. Keep in mind that the brain is a part of the nervous system and everybody's brain is different. That's what makes you you. So since everyone's nervous system is slightly different, it's going to contribute to whether or not those nerves are picking up the signals of baby moving and sending that signal to your brain to register and go, aha, there is something moving in there. So the point here is, is that if the mother has a more sensitive or more interconnected nervous system, she might be able to recognize those earlier movements earlier on, before week 16. Likewise, if the placenta is located posterior instead of anterior, it'd be easier for the mother to feel those movements earlier on as well. So then how is this gestational range of weeks 16 to 25 for feeling movements established anyways? Well, just like most things throughout pregnancy, we use averages. And of course, there are plenty of people that fall outside of the average bell curve, if you will, which also means that week 16 to 25 is a great reference point for the majority of people, but it's not the solid set in stone end all be all. This means that yes, it is possible for you to feel those movements before week 16. For me, I know this week in week 13, I felt movement in my very lower pelvic area and it was very slight only once 
but I know since this is my second pregnancy, what to feel for and what it feels like. And it definitely was not a gas bubble, y'all. It was the baby moving. Now I haven't felt her move again since then. It was only one time, but I know I felt the movement nonetheless. Speaking of what I felt this week in terms of feeling her move, I also felt more energized. I've been sleeping a little bit better, only waking up maybe twice a night. And this is all thanks to, I think anyways, this wedge that I'm sleeping with, and that kind of helps me stay on my side. It's not one of those whole pregnancy U pillows, it's just a wedge. It's smaller and easier to move about in the bed. And of course, wrapped around my giant stuffed duck because that's like the best body pillow ever, obviously. I treated myself to a massage as well this week and I had two of the best nights of sleep ever. So if you're on the fence about it, don't be. Go get a massage so you can sleep good again, at least for a couple nights. However, I do find myself still getting tired in the early afternoon and kind of feeling drained at that point, but not to the point where I'm literally passing out because I'm so tired. And my muscles, my shoulders, and my neck are still tensing up probably from stress, but it is what it is. And although the joy of eating still hasn't returned, I do find myself fancying homemade nachos with uh, lots of sliced jalapenos sprinkled on top. And this copycat wildflower bread company potato soup recipe that I made, mm, it's delicious. That's what I've been craving and eating all week long. Not to mention literally just anything spicy. Sounds so good. And speaking of spicy, what spicy things are going on developmental wise this week? At week 13, your baby is roughly 3.75 inches long, which is equivalent to roughly 9.5 centimeters or about the length of one spicy little jalapeno as shown in the model here. The bones beneath the still mostly transparent skin continue to grow stronger and get longer and harder. Meanwhile, your little jalapeno's fingertips are covered in their own unique fingerprints at this point. Their kidney and urinary tracts are completely functional, which is great news because that means they're starting to excrete a lot of that amniotic fluid they've been ingesting lately. And last but not least, there is a soft, fine layer of this hair-like substance growing all over your baby's body called lanugo. So if you feel like you have indeed felt your little jalapeno move about this week, don't be bullied by everyone online saying, it's not possible, you're crazy, you're just feeling gas bubbles. Mah, 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 mah. With science backing up the fact that everybody has a different size fetus, different strength fetus, different activity levels of the fetus, different placental positions, and different nervous system of the mother, it's clear to see why every mom is going to experience when they feel baby move at a different time, and certainly making it possible for her to feel those movements before week 16. If you have felt the movement before week 16, go ahead and comment below or hit that like button to show other mamas that it is possible and that they're not crazy or feeling gas bubbles. To join me next week on this 40 week pregnancy series, all you have to do is subscribe. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next week again.